Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee as we take a look at the upper airflow over the next uh, two weeks on the overnight GFS model. And there's our record highs coming in with this big ridge here in the east for Christmas Eve. And then, of course, it goes out. We get a little bit of a break, but there's still that ridge off the southeast coast going into the weekend. But a few things start to happen over time. Here's the building Scandinavian High that is pushing its way up into northern Greenland. And as we move through time, we're going to have a couple of weather systems go through one on Saturday and then the next one for early next week, which I'm going to go to in just a second. Now, what happens over time, and again, I mentioned this last night that the pattern to me looked like it was getting a, a little more interesting in the broad sense, nothing specific, but our flow, instead of coming straight from the Pacific, is coming a little bit more from uh, north, northern Canada. It's not cross-polar because there's no connection that goes all the way up, uh, but it's certainly not as extreme in terms of the temperatures that what we've been seeing. And it looks like it wants to shoot down one trough after another into the east. So sometimes in these kinds of situations, you have to be a little careful. You'll be in some borderline cold air. And depending on the strength of any of these systems, which the model is not going to see until we get much closer to any specific event. But I'm going to now switch over to early next week. We'll go a little closer. And this way we can see what's happening. And I want to go to the surface map so we can play it all out that way. And here we go, starting with um, tomorrow. And we're going to put it in motion. If it wants to go in motion, please go in motion. <laughs> there we go. Let me try again. There we go. And here's our rain for Wednesday. Looks like another decent shot of rain that comes through. Then on Thursday, ahead of the cold front, a couple of stray showers, and that's just about it. Most of them fall apart. We turn a little cooler and drier Christmas Day as a week high builds in, taking us into Saturday. Now, Saturday night, here comes another wave that goes up toward Detroit, and we get into some rain into Sunday morning, but then we get warm sectored again. So Sunday is liable to be another warm day with temperatures maybe getting into the 60s, but and then we have a more important cold front with a bigger high up in Minnesota. Now, what's going to happen is that high is going to build across the top in southern Canada here. And we have deep low pressure that's going to be running up towards St. Louis. And the model at least wants to bleed down some cold air. So it actually has a little bit of freezing precipitation here ahead of the main area of precip to the south as the low moves into central Illinois. At high, there's no block, so it gives way. And you can see it's actually brings some snow to New England for a switch and even has a band of heavier snow. Now we're out to Tuesday, Monday night into Tuesday of next week. And it actually still wants to ridge the high down so that it does show ice through much of upstate New York and in through Massachusetts and northern Connecticut with some snow in New England. And then that low... Uh, peaks out and goes into the goes near Toronto and you have a redevelopment that of some small of some sort a little wave here a little wave on a front action here with an onshore flow but that's then that's gone and then it has another wave that forms on the front that stays offshore and this is some colder air starts to come in so now we're going into New Year's which has it probably back down to seasonal or maybe even a little bit below normal uh, as we start the new year so uh, there are some changes, and as we move through time, even though, again, now at this point we're going into week number two so I, and beyond, so I really don't want to go too crazy about whatever it shows. It doesn't show any precip of consequence. It does show a colder look. I wouldn't say it's, a, it's not going to be a very cold look. Again, it may take temperatures down at least to seasonal. But we want to be careful with that northwest flow because it, sometimes, again, you get these weather systems that it doesn't see until it gets closer to the short range. So it might be something for us to look at. And finally, let's take a look at the uh, two meter temperatures and go toward, um, let's go to the bigger region so we can see what's going on. 
in the blocking area and you can see up here and we'll start it over again you can watch the process happen all the way through um, but you'll watch and you can be able to see the warming that goes on this is the initial time frame and now we're moving through Christmas and you can see how the warmer air is trying to push northward up into the Arctic uh, has, has a lot to fight here but it's having a little bit of success and then as we move toward the end of the period we uh, see that it has kind of a definite finger of warm air that's pushing now into the Arctic region so this is what we have to continue to see is that the warm air continues to take over in the regions of the Arctic uh, causing the cold air to get displaced and pushed further south so at least that trend continues for the time being we're going to have to go through a couple of weeks of transition to see where we ultimately wind up and again as a note of caution the pattern switch may not necessarily switch to a pattern you may like so um, enjoy your Wednesday <clears throat> we will have some rain be careful out there and uh, driving around and traveling around in the messy weather plus with everybody out and about does make it for a bit difficult a, a bit of a difficulty Thursday Christmas Eve a better day uh, and uh, temperatures approaching records and in some cases all-time record highs have a good day